Good morning everybody, welcome to IndyCar on the 4th of June, I'm Gordon Ross. Today's news stories are mostly about Donald Trump, but also uh, about the recent Gala Shields uh, march and rally for independence. But let's start with Donald Trump this morning, and you can't have failed to have seen uh, the scenes of um, mass, <laughs> I don't know what you would call it, um, mass begging in England over the last few days as, as the British government does everything in its power to try and woo the American president. And it's not being, uh, it's not any kind of secret to say that today is going to be the day when uh, Americans uh, and, 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 and America's entourage, if you like, follows the president on this state visit, will be sitting down uh, to actually talk about uh, the business deals that they're planning to do post-Brexit. So it's an open secret that the real reason for Trump's visit here was firstly for Britain to curry favour with the US and by having Donald Trump sitting next to the Queen and them chinking glasses and toasting the health and happiness of the millions of poverty-stricken people that they rule over uh, was going to somehow cement the relationship between the two countries and that Donald Trump uh, would be much more, shall we say, um, accommodating towards Britain's needs. So. Things that will be discussed today include the National Health Service. And there's no, again, no secrets been made of this that the National Health Service is in the negotiations along with every other aspect of um, British civil life, all up for grabs by America. Um, Liam Fox was on this morning on BBC uh, to, to answer questions about this. And when asked about, or asked directly about what the risk was, to the National Health Service, he said, of course, that, that couldn't happen because Britain would retain the, um, the regulation or the power to regulate all of its um, public services. Now, that's not really a guarantee that the health service is not going to be privatised. That, that is just somebody saying that we will uh, set the regulations for a health service. It doesn't say the health service, but regulating a health service and actually um, having it still nationalised and under government control are two di very different things. And the English government could sell the entire hospital and health service system to an American um, health care and health insurance company quite easily, or, or several, uh, and still claim to have retained regulation of the uh, public services. So it's no guarantee, and Liam Fox did nothing, um, at least in my opinion, to assuage my fears for what will happen uh, after Brexit. It appears quite um, boldly that the, the Tories are going to sell off the health service as part of the negotiations of a trade deal. They will also probably sell off uh, a lot of our oil interests, I would guess, because the Americans are very interested in oil, always have been interested in oil. And the issue of storing uh, over 200 highly dangerous and uh, toxic nuclear weapons will be discussed as well. And that means that Scotland will still be the dumping ground for all that nuclear filth that's currently up in Faz Lane. And that's going to continue under this new arrangement. It might even be strengthened under this arrangement. We might find ourselves hosting even more nuclear-powered American submarines with even more nuclear missiles. We just don't know. There is no guarantee with this. Where does it start? Where does it end? So the options um, for Scotland are rapidly boiling down to just one, which is to escape the UK before this happens. Because at the moment, it looks as if uh, the health service in England would be sold under this, this new negotiated trade deal with the Americans. The Americans will get full access to every corner of the British market. Not only that, they will lower the food standards to allow American, American manufactured foods onto our markets. And that will mean the import of, as we know, chlorinated chicken, uh, beef that's been pumped up with hormones and so on and so on. And all kinds of processed foods which permit things like um, insect wings, insect legs, insect feces, animal hairs, and all sorts of other objects and bits and pieces of biological crap uh, to exist inside the food chain because American food and drug agency have such lax standards. So all of these things are going to happen. It's, uh, it's no longer a guessing game, it's no longer it might happen. The British government is actively courting the United States and we're watching it on television as we speak. We haven't even left the, the European Union yet and the British government's already planning to sell the country off to the Americans. So, uh, to my mind, 
this is the time really when we need to redouble our efforts and we need to start getting this kind of news and this kind of analysis to the people who vote in Scotland because it's our country that's at risk as well. Our, our National Health Service is run by the Scottish Government and it is in, in full public uh, ownership. In other words, no parts of it are privatised except perhaps cleaning services. But all clinical services, as far as I'm aware, are still publicly owned. If the, the United Kingdom were to give access to the health service in England to American companies, then the corresponding drop in, um, in funding to the English health service would be mirrored in a percentage drop of similar scale in Scotland. That means our block grant, in other words, the money which belongs to us already, the tiny fraction of which we get back, will reduce even more because the British government will claw back uh, a percentage of the money because they're cutting services in England, they will try to cut them in Scotland as well by reducing their funding. And it will knock on. Eventually, our health service will not necessarily be privatised, but it will be uh, starved of funding in the same way that the English health service has been up until now, at which point they will finally say, well, this health service can't stand on its own and it's too expensive and therefore it's necessary for the private sector to come in and save it all uh, by buying it all up and running it for profit. And this is exactly what the Tories do with everything. They, they privatise everything in sight. They sell off every national asset they can find in order to... Um, to furnish their lavish lifestyles in Westminster, which we saw only yesterday, where each guest had six wine glasses. Now, that's just the glasses. So you can imagine how much wine must have been drunk. God knows how many uh, pieces of cutlery they must have had for the multiple courses of food that were on uh, offer that night. So phenomenal amounts of money being wasted on all this pageantry and gold braid and fake medals and speeches and sitting around eating masses of food when there are food banks all across the country uh, and toasting the health and happiness of people who are neither healthy or happy because they are being uh, starved to death by this wealthy elite that we're watching on the television. Okay, that brings me round to um, Scotland now to bring it back down to reality. And as you know, there was a very successful and very well attended march and rally in Gala Shields on Saturday, the first time that the Borders country had actually witnessed uh, a, full a full blooded Scottish independence march and rally. And it's estimated the numbers were somewhere between five and 10,000. I was in there, so I don't know. I'm sure people will correct me, but there was a colossal number of people for such a small town. On top of that, there were about 300 yes bikers, I believe, uh, who came down to add some noise and color to the proceedings. But um, unbeknownst to these bikers, along the way, the so-called force for good unionist militants had scattered screw nails across the road in an effort to cause accidents, because that's the only reason they would do something like that. This is an act of terrorism, domestic terrorism happening in Scotland in broad daylight on a public highway where somebody from, Scotland, uh, from either Scotland and Union or from the so-called force for good, which it definitely is not, uh, had gone out there and thrown packets and packets of screw nails across the public road. 300 motorbikes go by, seven of them hit these screw nails and get massive punctures in, the, in their tyres. Now, remember that a lot of the yes bikers are carrying children on their pillions. They bring their families with them to these events and they're they are peaceful protesters, they're not doing anybody any harm, they're riding their motorbikes down a public highway completely legally with their children on the back, with their flags and some lunatic, some homicidal maniac has, has <laughs> basically thrown screw nails across the road knowing full well that if somebody hits this at speed on a motorcycle and gets a puncture they can lose control the bike can go hurtling into the crowd who lined the streets of the town and cause who knows what, injuries, deaths, mayhem. That to me is a terrorist attack, an attempted terrorist attack in Scotland by British citizens, not some kind of a outside terrorism from some other country or some other religion. This is unionist terrorism and it's being visited on Scottish 
uh, peaceful protesters. What is going to be next? Is it going to be pipe bombs? Will there be Molotov cocktails? We have had, uh, as well as as well as this, we've had people being spat on. We have had people being racially abused by this group calling itself a force for good, which has got to be the biggest oxymoron and the, and the biggest piece of ironic crap you could ever hear. Anything that's for good in, in, in Scotland is very far from unionism. Unionism is an ugly stain at the moment on, on Scottish politics. But this is a new direct threat to people's lives and safety. And Police Scotland have been told about it, they are investigating it, and they are supposed to be making a statement about it at some point, sometime or other soon, presumably. I, I'm hoping it might be today or tomorrow, but what are Police Scotland going to do about this? Because, as Manny Singh pointed out, you can't watch every metre of a, of a route. You cannot go through uh, miles of country roads and check them all the night before. But this is what terrorism is about. It's about making people fearful, it's about costing the police time and checking things out, making sure there are no bombs, there's no booby traps, there's no screw nails, you know, there, there's no stingers being thrown across roads. God knows what these loonies will try next. But this is just the beginning of the scare tactics coming from the so-called force for good, run by this lunatic with the, the dirty union jacket. Um, I can't understand why the police aren't taking this far more seriously. I asked the question yesterday that why, if the yes bikers are going to come in on a particular route, that there should be two police motorcycles at the front, scanning the road for problems. Now, if by some uh, some chance or other, this terrorist group, this unionist terror group, strew nails across that and cause the death or injury of a police officer, then perhaps Police Scotland will take this a bit more seriously and perhaps jail these guys because they are obviously out to cause injury. They're out to cause terror and they're out to cause trouble. And this is a cowardly, nasty, uh, and potentially lethal thing to do to peaceful protesters. Uh, as a driving instructor, I see every day the the kind of mayhem that can happen when people just make mistakes or when they, they drive um, carelessly. But for somebody to deliberately try to cause an accident when 300 motorbikes are going to be passing through that part of the, the road, through that part of the town, is tantamount to attempted murder. It's certainly uh, an attempt to cause grievous bodily harm. It's an attempt to cause criminal damage. And it's terrorism, plain and simple, and I think we shouldn't tolerate it. Anyway, that's about it for today. Um, I'm sorry there's not a lot of good news in this bulletin today, but I think it is worth discussing this, and I know people have been greatly angered by the events at Gala Shields. Uh, the Yes Bikers, I think, are going to end up having to, um, to vary the route uh, and not make things so obvious in future. I mean, it's ridiculous that we have to do this, and perhaps police outriders will be necessary in future to protect the safety of the marchers and the people on, in the towns themselves who come out to watch because of the actions of uh, a force for good. A force for good in Scotland and Union are bankrolling people like this. It's obvious that it's their people that are doing this kind of activity. This kind of rampant, nasty, militant unionism is something we are not used to seeing in Scotland. This is something you know, from, from the past. This is like something from the 1970s in Northern Ireland. And if this is the beginnings of it, then the police have to stamp it out right now before it goes any further. Because there are going to be more marches and there are going to be bigger marches and more frequent marches and it's going to carry on. There are going to be massive public rallies all over Scotland over the next year. Uh, and they're going to get larger and larger and the risk to public safety is going to get greater. And I think it's high time that Police Scotland uh, made a statement about this and explained to us how they are going to protect public safety at such events. Because it's not the yes groups and it's not the, uh, the independence campaigners who are causing this trouble. It's not us who are terrorising people. We are a happy, uh, peaceful bunch of people who like to dance around the streets with their flags 
and have fun and, and have other people join us and enjoy the day. It's a carnival atmosphere. We do not pose a threat to anybody, as you know. And for uh, British Unionists to uh, attack us in this way just shows how desperate they are because they know that they're losing. There are so few of them now, it was hard for Mr Mankey Jacob to muster even half a dozen people to wave his Union flags at the last event. So I'm thinking that probably there will be more of these events uh, and probably there will be more of these um, terrorist attacks on uh, on our parades in an attempt to try and intimidate us, but it's not going to work. People can't be intimidated in that way, and we won't be. Anyway, I have to go. I'll see you all later on. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.